we first started this, there were people who thought, no way. You're not going to get there at all, not even in 10 years. We're going to take on challenges like this. We're going to push the limits. We're going to see where we end up. There's always going to be a risk of failure. Be happy for 400. Colorful piles of it are often strewn about on Christmas morning. Watson? What is wrapping paper? <laughs> Nicely done, Watson. Good job. I think the common understanding of what a computer is really capable and not capable of is not really well appreciated. And I think the Jeopardy Challenge has an opportunity to open a dialogue with, with the broader public to really appreciate the powers and the limits of computer technology. I don't know if I ever really believed for a while that we really would be competing on Jeopardy. I think there were probably moments where we never really knew if, if we would identify any breakthroughs that would allow us to break through some of these early performance barriers. As Watson really started to work and the performance really started to improve, it became much more feasible, much more possible. It all just kind of snowballed. I think the whole atmosphere and the whole attitude changed. After 55 champion level sparring matches, Watson's formal record of achievement is a winning percentage of 71%. We have to be very careful that we don't get a false sense of security and start to think we get everything right when really in reality we won't. There's a lot of luck involved in winning a game. How can Jennings manage to win 72 games or 74 games straight? Beyond me. That was uh, really amazing. Thank you, Johnny Gilbert. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Ken and Alex show. I was on Jeopardy for 75 shows, roughly six months of 2004. About half the year, I was annoying people on Jeopardy. The Jet Lee of uh, television quiz shows. Our hero, Ken Jennings. I remember preparing pretty hard the first time I was on Jeopardy. I made flashcards. I watched the show, you know, two or three times a day. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd mime buzzing in with a little fake buzzer. Ken. What is an epilogue? Right, Ken. What's aspirin? Correct, Ken. What is Johnson & Johnson? Right, Ken. Who is Petruchio? Correct. I was pretty obsessed. Brad, at the moment, as you can see, has a $12,400 lead over Ken. I can't remember exactly how many games I won, but uh, I've been on the show sporadically since 2000, and uh, they keep inviting me back, and I keep winning. Enjoy the moment, Brad. I am the biggest money winner in Jeopardy history. Most people don't know that. They will just assume it's Ken, but... Uh... <laughs> I have this record-setting streak, but he's beaten me face-to-face. -face. I've never beaten Brad at Jeopardy, and I don't know if he's ever lost a game, actually. I think Brad is one of the rare undefeated Jeopardy champions. I was sneaking peeks into the auditorium as they were building this thing. When I first saw the big video wall, the first time they turned that on, and then it felt like this, this is it, this is Jeopardy. And you walk into this auditorium and you feel like there's just a wormhole here and you're being transported to a stage in California. I certainly expect this to resonate for some time. People know the Jeopardy game show, they know Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter. This is the first time that they are going to see analytics do anything like this. The reality is that we're getting squeezed into two games, and we can have train wrecks. And what it can do is it can communicate to the broader public that, that we didn't achieve what we really achieved. The impact that that has on the emotions and drive and morale of the team is sort of counter to what we know we've really achieved from a scientific perspective. Shall we? I care very deeply who wins. I'm a, I'm a very competitive person at heart, and I know Brad is as well. Watson has been able to beat two-thirds of all Tournament of Champions players. I think, would I win two-thirds of all games against Tournament of Champions players? I don't know if I would. That's not something I've ever had to do. I don't know if I've ever been the underdog on Jeopardy, but I think I am this time. There's a bit of a John Henry thing for me. I kind of like the idea of going up against the machine and maybe showing that humanity has something else going on that maybe you can't, at least not yet, reproduce digitally. Because I'm a computer scientist, my perspective watching this game, 
I would be seeing this as a competition between the human beings standing up at the buzzer and the human beings who developed the Watson system. In that sense, I think of it as more of a human versus human challenge. We're done. This is it. This is our player. This is who's going out there. So we just have to, you know, stand behind him and hope. <laughs> our job, our commitment, our responsibility is to push this technology as hard as we possibly can. Because when we get out there in public, what we're demonstrating is what is the state of the art? What can computers really do? Watson.